Hello. Well, I'm back again with this, uh, the last deer from the last batch of poorly tanned capes. Now, one of the things that those poorly, t improperly tanned capes did, uh, what I'm calling surface tanned, uh, they also seem to have all come back with a certain amount of slipped areas. Why this happened, I don't know. I don't know if they were left on the rack at WD Tannery for too long. I don't know what, what caused it, but there was a lot of slippage on both capes. Uh, well, the, the last three capes that I showed you that came back from them. Um, this one here has some of the worst in that there is slippage to the face here along here. Now, there's a couple of ways you could handle this. You can paint it which is one way out of it. You can make it look like uh, wounds and make the wounds look fresh using various shades of Mars Red, say, and then when that paint is dry, going over it with a semi-gloss uh, top coat to make it look moist like it, the wound just happened. There are others who like to put um, uh, CA glue on the wounded, on the slipped area and touch a cotton ball to it. And try to convince customers that that looks like hair. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same method that I used to restore the velvet on a set of antlers on another video that I did. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I have some 2.4 millimeter uh, uh, static fibers I'm going to uh, attach to the face. I'm going to let them set a little bit and then I'm going to shape them in the direction of the hair growth. After that, when they dried, they will be touched up with a, uh, some acrylic colors with my airbrush. So that's where this project stands right now. And uh, I thought I'll show you guys how to do it and gals how to do this. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, in this close up, you can see the area of the slippage, hair loss, whatever you want to describe it as. And what we've got is we've got a couple of areas right here, all right, and small areas right here. I have some more slip spots along the bottom edge of the jaw, and these are going to be handled using a static polyester fibers. But I wanted to show you up close the area that's going to be repaired in question. I also have some areas around the eyes. I'm going to try this around the eyes. And I'm hoping you can see it better at this angle. And this is where I'm going to use the static rayon fibers. Right here around the back and a little bit just below where the eyelid would be located on both sides. So we're going to we're going to do some uh, some unique repairs on this deer head. All right, I'm going to load some static fibers into the into the Nach 2.0 electric static electrostatic dispenser. I'm just I'm going to put a load of them in here. Okay, I'm just going to put a bunch, like so. Now I'm going to secure a cone top, and this is kind of a concentrator. All right. Next thing I'm going to do, make sure it's turned on. But first, aha, I want to wet the area to be worked with a little plain water just to ensure that the skin doesn't suck all the moisture out of the the glue that's going to be used. And the glue I'm using is Mod Podge Matte. I just want to dampen the skin. Now the Mod Podge will be applied with with an artist brush. 
just a little one like so. I'm going to apply it like so. You don't need a lot, but you need enough to hold the fibers in place. And by wetting the skin ahead of time, you're ensuring that you're not going to suck all the moisture out of the glue, or that the dry skin won't suck all the moisture out of the glue. I'm going to put a good layer on here. Here on the ch on the lower lip area as well, where wherever hair is missing, I'm going to apply the glue because that is where the polyester, or uh, rather the rayon fibers, are going to be attached. I drop my glue into a little container of water. Now the switch for well, this is turned on, and you'll see. A little light in the handle indicating it's on. The next thing to do is to put a, I'm going to use a T-pin, I'm going to place this near the area that I'm going to apply my static fibers and this simply creates a ground. And you need this. A little alligator clip here, like so. Let me get this so that it's not in the way here. I'll put it on the other side, like so. Now there's no sound to this, but for what I do, a little, little uh, I make little buzzing sounds, just for the halibut. I'm going to put a piece of paper, brown paper, below it. And I'm going to shake this, and out come the fibers, and they will stand on end. Zzz, bzz, bzz, bzz. You can see them coming out and standing on end. And I'm going to make sure this is well filled in. Actually, it's best if you knock against it sometimes. And it really drives it out. It drives the fibers out. Whoops! Drives the fibers out. Okay, now. I'm going to shut this off, and you know it's off when the light goes out. Take this the pin out of here, and there's there's no real hole put into the face that you can. It's noticeable because it went into the heavily haired area. I'm going to get a soft brush. A softer brush, a larger brush too, like so. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to blow off the excess lightly, gently. Now I'm going to lightly brush in the direction of the growth of the hair. This may need a second application. Not even brushing really, I'm patting it down lightly. I'm going to use a soft, I'm going to use a soft uh, watercolor brush. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply some more glue directly over this. Make it a little fresher. Alright, I'm going to take off what's there and I'm going to reapply the static fibers. I'm going to take this off. I'm just going to wipe this right off and I'm going to reapply 
some glue right here and then I will I'm going to apply it a little thicker this time like so just a little thicker this time as this is the first time I'm trying this for hair replacement we shall see how this goes alright now I'm going to again place the pin near the source of the repair into the deer into the form there we are turn on the static applicator and I'm going to gently reapply static grass in place it should come, it's come, it comes out, it's the, the, um, the static fibers stand on end. Oh, much, much better. Much, much better. Yeah, I can see that. Much, much better. It won't take a lot, it won't take a lot of color to restore this. I want to put this on heavy. There we are. There we are. Now I'm going to let this set until the glue completely dries or nearly dries. I'm going to leave this about a good 15, 20 minutes, half hour at the most. So then I can gently lay these fibers down with the direction of the hair growth. Um, I'll do that on camera. Then after that we'll blow off the excess and uh, probably apply another batch. We have other areas that could use some re restoration right here at the front of the nostrils and again along the lower jaw and on the underside of the chin it's a little shy of hair and then don't forget I'm going to do the back of the eyes as well. In fact I think I'll do the back of the eyes now. Okay, I'm going to apply some glue to the rear corner of the eye here and a little bit here on the underside of the upper lid and then a little bit at the front here and that's where I'm going to apply the fibers I want to put the glue on fairly heavy and thoroughly but I want to be careful not to get it where there should be just plain skin so I may have to get another little brush and do a little sculpting of the glue application get a dry brush and manipulate it where I really want it okay here like so I'll take it off of here this should be just skin at the back of the eye I'll spread around some of the glue here. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the front where there's supposed to be hair. Like so. Just like so. And again with the other brush, I'm just going to even this off like so, just to take the glue away from where I don't want any fibers. And now here I'm going to attach the pin nearby. I'm going to do it down on the form, make sure it's not trying to go into the clay. This will be hell to try and drive into the clay. So you get it into the where the foam of the form is. Like so. We turn on the applicator. And I'm going to gently apply over the top. Hmm. 
Hmm, I might have to refill this. Nope, here we go. Here we are. Okay, it looks like I need to put a little more glue on this along this bottom side of the upper eyelid. So the glue I had there just didn't take. I don't know if you can see, but you can see here how these fibers are standing up on end. Once they're groomed down. They're going to look just like the hair. Right now, it looks like disturbed hair. Now, let's try and get a little more here. Do this quickly, 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 quickly. There we go. There we are. Much, much nicer. Okay. And this coloration is pretty nice right here. Once once it's sprayed over with a little uh, some acrylic on an off-white color, acrylic paint, after it's laid flat, that will match up beautifully. So here we've got this, like so. Okay, you can see where it's all attached here. It's sticking up, that's what you can't see, is that it's actually standing upright. But you can see that here, that will be laid down. And it will match the direction of the hair that's in place here. I'm going to let this set and come back. I'm going to let this set up some and come back to it and groom the fibers into their proper position. Bear with me. Okay, in the time it took me to apply the fi uh, fibers around the eye, the side of the face here has set up enough that I'm going to come in. This is a very soft brush, very soft. I mean, this is so soft. And all, all I'm going to do is press down and direct the fibers where I want them. I'm not brushing them, per se. I'm just simply going to direct them where I want them. And they're laying down beautifully. I think once the color is applied, I'm not even going to have to go back and worry about applying a second layer. These are beautiful here. All right, there we go. And that's there, and that's there. Now, I'm going to gently blow off the excess, try to catch it on some brown paper so I can save it. Now, I have a lot of this. I'm not really worried about it. It does make a mess, though. All right, that's really well glued down. Okay, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to direct it now with my fingertip. I'm going to use different... I'm going to roll my fingertips. Like so. Almost like taking a fingerprint. Just laying it down. There. That's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. When this fully dries, I'll go over it with my uh, my little uh, Dirt Devil vacuum and get this all up. 
suck off all the excess. Now I'm going to go back to the eye. I'm going to lay the fibers down on the eye. Hopefully this has had enough time to stay. I want these to lay down. So I'm going to lay these down with the brush. You see they're sticking up. I want to lay them down ever so gently. Like so. I'll lay them down with my finger. Tip. Like so. Very good. Oh Lord, that is nice. Now I'm going to lay down the fibers at the back of the eye. Alright. I'll lay down these fibers here. The underside of the upper eyelid. Lower the excess. The excess is truly in the way. Of accomplishing my goal here. I'll lay this down. I'm just going to dampen my fingertip a little bit and lay this down. Does it require a lot? A little bit of this stuff goes a long, long way. off of here like so. Here we go. Just like so. Now when this is painted and finished She's going to look really nice. She's going to look so nice. Like so. Look at that. We've replaced hair on the bare spot at the front of the eye and on the bare spot at the back of the eye. I have to check the other side. I'm not sure. There might be the same problem on the back eye as well. I have to check. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but I will check. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to clean the fibers off where there should be bare skin. Like so. Now one of the things I've not tried to do is replace the missing eyelashes and I'm not going to worry about that too much only because my client is aware of what's being done on his deer here. Now this brush is a little stiffer and I'm using this now to really really press the fibers down in place because I can. Okay, like so, and let's come here to the front of the muzzle again, the side of the muzzle, I should say. Now, blow off the excess from here, get this all off of here. Where I don't want it. Now to get the underside here, I'm going to have to turn the deer upside down. This didn't really cover very well. But this here is really well covered. Again, moistened fingertip and lay this down. Okay. 
and there. We now have. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Now, now they're being groomed. The hairs are being groomed in place. And when the color is restored, the bare spot that we saw there earlier is gone. I'm also going to reapply the glue and fibers to this area of the lower lip, of the lower chin, where it's a little thin. Now I know this looks a little yellowish green on camera, but that's because it's the, that's the color of the fibers. And when I paint them, it will not have that color. It will have an, a nice off-white color. In fact, I could probably hit that with some pan pastel and see what happens. Right, just playing around here, I have some pan pastel. I'm just tapping it down onto the fibers. I like that. Might not even have to use an airbrush. Airbrush colors. I think this is going to work fine. Hmm. Well. I'm doing the same application around the eyes at this point. Okay, now I'm going to take a little paper towel and I'm just going to simply just tap this here and just to and when the color is applied properly when, when I when I paint around the eyes properly. It's going to make a huge difference. Like so. There we go. And this brush just pushed it in just into the fibers just a little more than it had before. That looks pretty damn that looks pretty damn good. And I use the brush down here on the muzzle a little more. Put a little more color in here. Okay. The applicator 
the sponge tip applicator was good for applying it to the surface this will work it down in just a little bit more and allow me to blend right down into the fibers there we go Okay, I think we've got a good start here. Yeah, yeah, looks a hell of a lot better than it did before. Hell of a lot better than it did before. Down here, I still have to get down here, so I'm going to have to turn the ear all the way upside down to get to this lower jaw. But uh, I like what I've got here right now. I like this very much. Very nice filling. Worked wonderfully. I hope you were able to get something out of this. I know I sure did. Well, I think we had a pretty successful uh, transplantation or restoration, I should say, of some slip, slip spots on a muzzle, which is a very, very difficult place to restore anything. The face is difficult to make right. Cotton balls aren't going to do it. This... These uh, rayon static fibers, that's the way to go. It works to create groundscapes in model railroading. It worked to restore velvet on antlers. Uh, in that antler video, I showed taking an actual bone antler and creating um, velvet on, a, on a, an antler that's solid bone. And right here, we've created some nice little repairs. Now, the pan pastels were nice, but I think I will go over this with some, um, with my airbrush, um, just to even off the color a little bit, uh, just, just a little more. But um, I hope you got something out of this. I got something out of this, which is really good. Uh, I know that I tried something and it worked. <clears throat> it worked. Okay, it's the next day. I, um, Vacuumed off the excess fibers with my little old dirt devil, and I mean old dirt devil. Then I fired up my uh, Pache dual action VL1 airbrush and I applied a light coating of Vallejo White airbrush paint it's a it this is for this is a model paint made just for airbrushes okay I thinned it a little bit with a few drops of the airbrush thinner and applied the paint to this area coming from behind so it would get under the fibers. I then applied from the top and I found that while the paint was still a little wet and a little tacky I was able to press down a bit like so and really was able to lay the hairs the, the hairs <laughs> the fibers down but what I've got here now is a really nice presentation of a repaired face I also did the same thing up at the eye. The nice thing here is that I do go over the I, I, I finish my deer with oil paints, not airbrush paints. But I was able to lay these hairs down as well. And I was able to direct the position of the hairs, again, the fibers, my mistake, the fibers at the back of the eye. Now when I finish my deer's eye with the oils, I go, I go over with a layer of white, which goes all around here and all around the, uh, the brown area, the skin area. Then I go over that with burnt umber and blend everything together. The nice thing is that what I did here 
in order to replace the missing hair has taken and has just gone completely it's 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 all been well done now I also did a little bit on the nose I added some additional fibers up here where the hair was a little sparse and along the edge of the nostril opening here I then took the Vallejo white paint and sprayed over that and I'm using this little detail brush to remove the white paint where I do not want it this will allow me to darken some of the area here with the oil paints as I usually do and I can get it right out and get it off the nose pad as you can see it's coming off the nose pad a little little bit of nature's solvent saliva will help there as well but I would say that this first time trying static fibers to replenish missing hair on a, a white-tailed deer face has been a complete success. I did the other side as well where needed along the edge of the eye and uh, it has turned out very very well. So now I've got a nicely restored hair pattern where it was missing all around this deer's face around the eyes, the nostrils, sides of the face. This thing has been put together real nice and I was able to correct this poorly tanned cape and the missing hair that was a result of the poor tanning job and probably the poor storage job as well. So now all the hair that was missing over here is replaced. The hair under the chin has been replaced and it's, it's, it's been replaced very well. And I recommend this to anyone who needs to replace hair on the face of a deer. I'm going to assume this can be done with any mammal, an African mammal that's missing hair, a fur bearer that's missing some facial, facial fur, anything. This, uh, this stuff comes in, this, these static fibers come in different lengths. And there are, there are many, many lengths. This one here... This is muddy, it's called muddy dead grass. And um, this is six millimeter, okay? The color of it is, would make good fur or hair, showing on the color of this. All right. Um, Scenic Nature or Nature's Scenics, whatever the hell they're calling themselves now, from Woodland Scenics, which is the parent company, is not the only source. This was a, a company that was found on, on uh, eBay. They're a, uh, a, a company located in the UK. These are for um, gaming. Uh, these are gaming products. People who make those game boards and have little figures and houses and whatnot. All right, they, they make stuff for, they make fibers for all kind of ground cover. Now, you, very rarely are you going to find hair colored. Um, but like I say, this was kind of an, a pale yellowish, which was a good base. And then using some airbrush paint was able to restore the color. So it's obvious that this is doable. If this is doable on a face of a white-tailed deer, one of the most prominent animals that a taxidermist mounts in the United States of America, it tells me that this can be used for many other mammals as well. Okay, so I dare say this was a successful project. Um, I hope you learned something. Again, like I said before, I learned something. I learned that this could be done and can be done successfully. Uh, not only could this be done on a white-tailed deer, you could probably do it on any African animal, mule deer. As long as you apply the fibers and work them into position. And like I say, sometimes the nice thing about this, it's, it's a water-based glue, so I was able to wipe it away and reapply it. And you could do that as needed. That's a good thing. Uh, so until we meet again, 
on the interweb. I'm going to say adios amigos, be well, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you again. Take care. Well, the buck is finished. I mean completely finished. His nose pad has been textured. The little spaces around the eyelids have been filled in with epoxy. Nostrils have been blended. Uh, the colors have been restored with oil paints, Winger and Newton oil paints. After they dried, they were sealed with a matte acrylic sealer, uh, aerosol sealer. Uh, and then after that, I kind of toned things down a bit using pan pastels. Uh, I'm real pleased the way this fella came out. He turned out real well. The repairs just turned out better than I expected. And this was the first time I used them on the face of, uh, on the face of a deer. I'm very happy with the, with the method, with the products. I can recommend it. Uh, I learned something. I hope you learned something. And until we meet again, adios amigos. Be well, stay safe, stay healthy. Take care.